guys, welcome. This is the Leo bonus reading. So um, in case you missed that announcement, um, last month I mentioned Leo was proving to be one of my most loyal, devoted, consistent, supportive signs. So um, each month I award a bonus reading to a sign that has touch my heart in some way or come through with support in some way and so it's your bonus reading day um so what i'm going to do is start off first of all thank you thank you thank you thank you um i'm going to start off with pulling um a card from fortune oracle this just activates the reading Let's see what we get. Oh, you get the world card. Card 36, the world. Be open to new possibilities in all areas of your life. Yes. Um, and I'm going to read it for you. It is a great message for sure. So I'm going to read two parts to you. The first is just the general message. And then the second one is um, for your personal life or relationships. Here it goes. This card represents a time of completion and achievement, right? Because we talk about endings and new beginnings. You have probably just completed a major cycle and are ready for the next level. Although you have endured major hardships, perhaps some heartache, you are stronger, wiser, and more confident now. But of course you are, Leo. This is a fulfilling time on many levels as past efforts are well rewarded. You will be broadening your horizons and living life to the full. Travel is a standout and many trips are indicated. The world is your oyster. March on to splendid victories. I love this message for you. Now, for your personal life slash relationships, it says people born overseas or who live at a distance will come into your life frequently. You will form some wonderful love relationships and great friendships. Singles searching for love should investigate online dating services. Yes, do you know why that is? Because the world card is um, uh, ruled by, the world card is Saturn. And Saturn was the original ruler of Aquarius, um, but now rules Capricorn. But the energy of the world card is very much about connectivity. Um, which is Aquarius's domain. So that's why they're talking about online dating services. It's an ideal time to give it a go as the vibe is very pos positive for meeting new friends, lovers, and partners. Networking and communication is key to the period ahead for s success in all areas of your life. You will get involved in helping people less fortunate than yourself, and this will be a very uplifting experience. Animals also play a big role in your happiness, so visit a farm or the zoo or purchase a new pet. They will all contribute to your well-being. Health concerns will be dealt with as long as you are sure to eat correctly and keep your doctor's and dental appointments regularly. It is a great time for healing and achieving better overall health. So again, when you think about Saturn, which rules the world card, Saturn is the great teacher, but also it's very structured, very regimented. It's about keeping up on your checklists and not letting things slip through the cracks. Um, so I really love this. And of course, the world card with connectivity and the internet and travel, um, it feels like, yeah, some of you may be in for a very exciting um, time ahead. I love it. So, hope that spoke to some of you. Yes, new friends. Maybe, maybe you'll meet someone online from another country. <laughs> That's a possibility. Let's keep it fresh. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to pull my split soulmate spread and give you a little love around that. And then um, I will take it to the extended for a deeper dive. But this one kind of lets you see step by step how how you're each progressing individually. OK, here we go. Overall energy is the Ten of Cups. So the, the world in the Ten of Cups, my cup runneth over. The energy of emotional completion, feeling happiness, bliss, 
a state of nirvana in matters of the heart. Definitely the world is your oyster at this time and the focus is on this happiness. So as you know, I tend to look at this um, spread as this is your divine counterpart. This, sign, this side is for the sign I'm reading for or about, which in this case is Leo. So it can come through reversed, especially if you're a cross watcher. So make no fuss about it. It's just a structure for me to follow as a reader. It helps me figure out who's who and you can always flip it around. So your person is in the present energy of the Six of Pentacles. That is about generosity, right? Six of Pentacles is about reciprocity, the equal give and take of it all. Um, now, what their blocker challenges? What are they up against? Four of Swords. Could be some healing or some deep reflection and their opportunity going forward is the moon. Now, sometimes the moon can talk about what triggers us, right? Our fears, our insecurities, our worries and apprehensions, but it's also our intuition. So it's very interesting to me that this person's opportunity will be to sort of check in with their inner guide, right? They're, this is Piscean energy. Um, the moon is associated with the sign of Pisces in the tarot. Um, so it is about that connectedness to all and part of our connectedness is what our inner compass, our inner knowing, our intuition tells us about what's happening in the world around us. So very interesting. You're coming in here with, to the reading with the Two of Wands, and that is about choosing the path. Um, the Two of Wands is asking you, what do you want in a world of possibilities? And then once you have that clear, which path is most likely going to get me there? And then you set your sights on that and start setting in motion what you need to bring that manifestation into reality, right? So very interesting that you're coming in at all. It's not a crossroads, but it kind of is because it's, it's a choice that needs to be made. Um, and in your blocker challenge is the high priestess. The high priestess is associated also with the moon. So it's about intuition and you may be struggling there a bit with what your intuition is trying to tell you about that path forward, about this choice you need to make. And then your opportunity, hang man, I'm feeling some surrender, right? Um, potentially some surrender or to, you know, press pause and evaluate the situation from like the 30,000 foot view. That's another meaning. So we'll see when we get to the clarifiers. All right, guys, and all this attention is feeding into the 10 of cups. Three of swords, four of cups, knight of pentacles, right? Like my happily ever after is taking very long and I'm not feeling very happy. Um, the Knight of Pentacles moves very slowly, very deliberately and methodically. Sort of wants to know what the end game is before taking those first steps forward. So I'm feeling like something feels a little stuck in the mud. And being that we have the Three of Swords and the Four of Cups here landing on the 10 is telling me that, you're, you know, there's a little bit of... Um, hurt energy, some feelings of potential rejection or disillusionment in matters of the heart here. Um, and because it's taking so long or you're not aware of the steps that are being taken, um, it seems like it has got you in a bit of a funk. And this can go for both of you as well. So let's see your person here with the Six of Pentacles. Five of Cups, yes, the Moon, right, the Nine of Wands, hello. Um, this, there's a struggle here for both of you. There's a struggle. I feel it's shared. Um, I definitely feel like the Moon here is coming through as the fears and insecurities and apprehensions that I mentioned, but that same energy can be flipped on its head and, and prove very useful. So this person is feeling some regrets right? Regrets of the past, maybe mistakes that were made. Maybe they haven't been as giving to you as you have been to them. And so the thoughts are all about, gee, I don't know, maybe it's too little too late, right? And that nine of wands is a clue that they haven't given up, that this is somebody who's in the struggle and they're persevering, um, right? They're kind of trying to keep their energy up. 
it's difficult, but they're trying. Um, and they're going to need that to overcome those fears and to overcome the sense that all is lost. So let's see the Four of Swords in the Blocker Challenge. Nine of Swords, Two of Cups, Queen of Cups. Well, you are the keeper of their heart for sure. But here's the thing. Um, this person is clearly worried, anxious, fearful. Um, the Four of Swords is not really coming through as healing. It's coming through as reflection, right? It's To me, it's a card that um, speaks to a lot of that like Mercury retrograde energy. Which, by the way, as I record this on Wednesday, July 17th, Mercury is now beginning what we call his pre-shadow phase. So he's still moving forward, okay? And he's, he's going to come, he's going to move forward, and then he's going to hit 22 degrees of Leo, right? And then he's going to, no, he's going to, he's, okay. He's at 22 degrees of Leo. Hang with me. This is important information for you. Let me be sure that I've got the stuff right. Yes. Version two is correct. Mercury is presently sitting at 22 degrees of Leo. He's going to continue to move forward until August 5th. He will tip over into Virgo at that point station retrograde and then go all the way back to this point right now so from now until august 5th is like the most important part of the retrograde season because it gives you all the fertile information right like this two week period or so two or three week period leading to the actual retrograde is what you're going to be traversing over when he does go retrograde if that makes sense so I call it the opening act. I call it like what I want to know to be able to figure the whole play out by the end is going to be told in the first act. So that's what I think I'm seeing here. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Um, old lady in the house. So that's the thing. The Four of Swords to me is the review, the reevaluation, the reassessing, the recalibrating, the um, you know, realigning to the path they belong on. That's what I think I'm seeing here because there's all this anxiety and worry that it's too little too late, that they've messed things up in this connection. Oh my gosh. And, and, and if, if so, by virtue of the lack of reciprocity. That's it. Okay, so see, you get extras in your bonus. <laughs> Here we go. Now, what's the opportunity for them in the future? The moon. Yes, trust their intuition about this connection. Trust their inner voice that tells them, call your person. Call your queen of cups. Talk to them. Let them. Let what you've learned in your reflection be your guide. Yes, I know. It's really beautiful. So I feel like this person's in this phase of reassessing the whole thing. They haven't given up yet, but they're a little nervous that it might not be in their hands to make anything, you know, to change anything. But they haven't given up. So they're focused on the connection. They're focused on who you are to them. They're focused on how loving and generous and kind and compassionate you've been. And then as soon as they get a handle on that, um, their intuition kicks in. And their intuition will guide them to some form of communication with you, some, um, you know, opening salvo that might provide some healing energy for your hurt feelings and disappointments in this connection. Now, you're coming in with the Two of Wands. Ten of Wands. Empress. Ace of Wands. Ugh. Guys, I feel it. I feel how heavy this is for you. It's like I, I, can, I can feel you saying, like, this is too much. It's, um, 
I just need some relief. I want to offload the, the, the burden, the heavy energy. Um, I feel like you're trying to make this decision from the highest and best version of your divine feminine energy. The Ace of Wands underneath is like, I have, I'm passionate. I want an opportunity to sort of act on passion. And, and it's not always a sex thing. Don't get me wrong. It's part of, um, right? This doesn't feel passionate. It feels mired down, right? And, and if we want to get to the Ten of Cups, if we want that brass ring, it's going to take a little fire. It's going to take a little gumption. So I have a feeling that this has all grown very heavy for you. Um, things dragging on too long, moving too slowly, and so you're in this pivot point almost of um, contemplating the, the road ahead. So in your blocker challenge, we have the high priestess. Oh, okay. She's coming through a little. She's coming through in two ways. The high priestess um, is about intuition, but it's also about, you know, um, she doesn't speak, so it can be no communication or separation. So those themes come through a lot with the high priestess. And as a blocker challenge, it makes sense for where things seem to stand right now. Here's the thing. I'm getting both intuition about there's the king of wands with the chariot. And underneath is the hierophant, which talks about like conventional committed relationships and, um, you know, being being a person of one's word, having honor. Um, the King of Wands is, is Leo. It's associated with the sign of Leo. And it is all about uh, no hesitation, moving forward, making progress towards something more committed. And so I feel your blocker challenge is you're either struggling because you don't have the, the intuitive hits coming in around that, or the blocker challenge is the no communication, is holding everything back right? Four of Cups. Um, even even the um, Hanged Man can be that a little bit, can be something feeling like it's stuck or um, stagnant, which is what I'm feeling coming from the Knight of Pentacles a little bit. So uh, being that that's your blocker challenge about, you know, how things will move forward, I think it's auspicious that we see this person giving things deep thought about you and the connection and then their intuition kicks in that it's time to pick up the freaking phone right so it does seem like you know where you're blocked they will have the opportunity to um, resolve that so let's see what the hanged man has to say This is your opportunity. Oh my God. Oh, I love it. It's a couple messages, but the one that's coming through, because obviously you see the Queen of Wands. Now we have the Queen to the King. So we know we have a couple here, lots of chemistry, very passionate. Um, definitely people who sort of you know, like as a couple, you would get noticed, meaning people can see your aura when you're together. It's like, it's just a thing like um, the way you enter a room, right? All eyes on, I don't want to call it a power couple, but you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's like when you're really into somebody and they are into you and the pheromones are swirling and the chemistry is on fire and everybody's like whoa look at that i want some of what they have so that's what i'm seeing here from the king and the queen and uh, your opportunity is is probably more about pressing pause than it is about surrender and i'll show you why in a second because the queen of wands is a leader she takes charge right She's like, it's like moths to a flame with her. So it's going to draw this king toward you to work on what needs to be fixed because there is something lurking here that is unsustainable for the long haul. 
There can be no happily ever after if we're sitting feeling, you know, disillusioned and either heartbroken or hurt feelings. It's not sustainable. So what I love here is your opportunity will be to kind of pull yourself out of the situation, take that 30,000 foot view as objectively as you can, which means like this person's point of view, my point of view, what they have said, what I have said, sort of in a neutral way so that you're, you're sure that you're understanding, you know, what you bring to the party, so to speak. And then to take that information that you gain, because part of the message of the hanged man is the waiting for enlightenment. This is Neptune, the great spirit. So like that flash of, oh, I know what, what we need to work on and how we can sort of find our, our, our way back to something that's workable, where we're not always living with the highs and the lows, where we can kind of um, have this nice give and take. So I think it looks good, Leo. I mean, it's a lot. I'm gonna say it right here. Um, status complicated. But it feels like things might be moving in a good direction. So we'll, I will take it to the extended. As you know, there are there's option one, two, or three below for how you can access extendeds and what you get for your investment. So please look at those. Um, I am presently offering a Lionsgate private reading special. Lionsgate is in your season, Leo, 8-8. August 8th is Lionsgate. The portal opens end of July, closes mid-August, but we use 8-8 uh, as the peak. And so it's $88 off my regular rate. There is a link below to that if you're interested. So, and I like to let you know because a lot of my private readings come from Leos, who knew, or people dealing with Leos. So I've got some experience. Here is the um, astrology. We have the Knight of Pentacles is Virgo. We have the Moon is Pisces. Uh, Queen of Cups associated with Cancer. The Moon, again, twice Pisces. We've got the Empress is Venus, Taurus and Libra. How lovely. High Priestess is the Moon. King of Wands is Leo. Chariot is Cancerian energy. The Hierophant is Taurus. Um, Hanged Man is Neptune, as I said, which rules Pisces. So if you've got Pisces in your chart or you're dealing with a Pisces or you are a Pisces here as Cross Watcher, a lot of confirmation for that um, for that uh, pairing. We have the Queen of Wands is Aries, and we have uh, the Tower is Mars, which rules Aries. So if you've enjoyed your bonus reading and you haven't already, please do subscribe below. Help me get the subscriber numbers up. That gets me put in front of more people. When YouTube sees that my channel is growing, they put me in front of new viewers. Um, and that's been my toughest challenge lately. So I appreciate your help in that arena. That is what I have for you. I am heading to the extended now and let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the two of you together and look at what's working for the connection, what's not working for the connection and the opportunity. So it's like taking these two separate things and pulling them together and diving deeper still. I will get a message from this person, what they want you to know. I will pull a card to show you what they are picking up from you at 5D, like what vibe you're putting out, which is usually super enlightening. Um, I'll get a message for you from spirit, some guidance, some confirmation, maybe something to be on the lookout for, hidden energies for your person, what's happening behind the scenes that you don't know about but could be very helpful, and then how things might unfold going forward. I know that's exciting. I'm heading there now, so I'll see you, in, I'll see you soon. Bye.